Okay, here's the here's how what I do for glow in the dark, making pulling glow in the dark cane. I need a seven to nine millimeter rod of clear and a five millimeter rod of clear for encasement. I need a couple of eighth inch stainless steel punties. And I need my glow in the dark. This is what I am using. Um, it's aqua glow in the dark. Works really well for me. Um, I have it down here in my handy little stainless steel spork. And that's really all you need to do this with. Okay. To start, you're just heating up the end of the larger diameter cane. You're just heating up the end of it. You're not getting any more than that. Get it nice and soft. And go into the glow-in-the-dark powder. Just tap it a few times. Tap off the excess. And this never goes back in the flame until it's encased. So now we're going to use the smaller diameter rod to encase it. And I'm starting my wraps by attaching it to the glass rod that the so that it's not straight onto there. So I have a foundation to work from. Now I'm just encasing the glow in the dark. Okay. And that's the first layer. I do three layers. Now it's a matter of melding that smooth. And then the next layer of, of glow-in-the-dark powder. Again, it does not go into the flame until it's completely encased. So you're feeding the small diameter rod through to do the encasement. There's, there's the foundation. Now I can start adding over it, tying into that foundation wrap. And you're going to have air trapped in here. That's nature of glow in the dark. It's got a lot of air in it. That's what makes the commercially available glow in the dark cane so fragile, is there's a lot of air bubbles in it. Okay, there is the second layer. Again, melting it smooth. Well, it's still warm. Wrap it up. We're going to do one final encasement. This is just a good diameter that I can work with once I get ready to start pulling it. You get much bigger, then your arms really have to get much longer. You can see I'm just feeding the clear through and attaching to the wrap that I already have. Is that glow in the dark powder is just loose on the surface of the glass, at least partially. Just trying to get everything covered up. Okay. I'm going to melt that smooth. And if I see any really big bubbles, I'll deal with them right now by pinching and letting them pop. But the mixing process will also get rid of a lot of the big bear bubbles. So now I've got the stainless steel rod. Heat up the end of that, touch it into the gather. You don't have to go very far in. You just need to really just touch it. 
And now I'm heating up the large diameter rod to cut it off. Okay, well that's cut off. I've got the other stainless steel punty. I'm going to attach it at an angle so that I can pull things around. And I'm going to start heating it up and start twisting to mix. This will help bring the bigger bubbles to the surface and cause them to pop. I'm going to go at an angle so you get better mixing. Okay, there's some big, big bubbles. Come on, you can pop. I only don't want to pop, so I'm going to pop them. Take this punty off. Just keep track of the glass. Okay, there's one. There's another one. Okay, that's a lot better. Reattach my punty to pull. I'll mix, mix with this a little bit more, and then I'll pull. Okay. Nice and warm. Take it out of the flame. Let it cool just a little bit. And then start pulling. I got this in a little deep into the gather, so it's not going to ha have very good yield, but it'll still work. Just gently pulling. Continue to pull. It's starting to stiffen up. I've got about as far as I'm going to get it now. So I'm going to flame cut this end. And then tweezers. And that end is cut. And that's how I do glow-in-the-dark stringer. <laughs>